Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Uh, this is part two of my series about boxers and the first part I just show a picture hopefully here I it was all about proportions of a box and basically usually people suggest doing the lid at about a third of the height of the box and the one I turned was totally out of proportion where the lid was a mass part of the box probably three quarters of the size of the box and in that case I think it actually worked quite well so proportions as far as it's pleasing to the eye a third is nice but certainly look at other options so in part two uh, I was only going to do about grain orientation but because the wood I've got um, is still fairly wet and I was going to do a fourth part, um, this time I've done also included rough turning, as in turn, roughly turning wet wood. So first of all the grain orientation, and again I'll show the picture up here of, of what I'm going to show you that I've made, I've rough turned this. Now normally on grain orientation, when, when you turn a, a, a box like that, it's in a spindle, so the grain is running top to bottom. And I don't know whether I've actually seen anybody do a cross grain like you would do normally a bowl. So in this case, the grain actually is running across that way. So there is very, very slight bits of tear out on the end grain here. But bearing in mind, I've only gone over it with a bowl gouge very roughly. And, and it's not too bad at all. I mean, I've had a lot, lot worse on end grain for tear out this will sand out very well and I've got to say that even looking at this as it is without sanding and polishing up or anything like that I think this is going to be something special regarding the grain. As to rough turning uh, on one of the Facebook groups there was a conversation about it a while ago rough turning a box and somebody suggested that you can't. Now I know for sure that you can because I've done one or two and obviously the likes of Sam Angelo have been doing it for years. I mean he mainly just turns green wood so he'll literally a freshly cut down tree, cut the blanks out, rough turn some boxes, pack them away with the shavings in a box for anything from a few months to a few years and then come back and finish them off. So this one again of I've got to say the base has come out extremely well. I've kept the whole wall thicknesses to about 8mm and the very very base because of obviously the thickness of the tenon as well which probably just over about 10mm there so and it's only about 18% I had on this when I started and I can't get a reading above probably about 12-13% uh, at the moment so that will dry out quite nicely if anything it's probably a little bit too thick. The lid uh, because I've actually done uh, the curved bit in the lid, um, I've had to leave the whole thing fairly thick. Now, if this was really, really wet wood, then that might be a bit more of a problem, and I'd probably have to seal all the ends and put it away. But as, like I say, it wasn't too wet to start with, I can leave that as it is, and I will leave it as it is, just open in my workshop, probably for at least four weeks. I will weigh it and just regularly look to see when it loses mass to see to the point of roughly when it's going to be at a finishing weight. So in here I have a piece of oak which is 60mm square and about 105mm long so that's roughly 2.5 inches square by just over 4 inches long. And with this piece, I'm going to do two things in one. First of all, I want to do a piece with side grain. When most people do boxes, it's in a spindle, so the grain is going upwards, and the end grain will be at the ends. 
In this case, the grain is going across that way, so I have end grain there, side grain there, end grain there, and side grain on the ends. Also, to cap it off, this piece of oak um, I've just cut here, this side is still about 18%. So I'm going to rough turn this and see also see what it comes out like obviously with the side grain so i'll try and do some form of a finishing cuts um on the thing but because it's also end grain that i'm cutting into i cannot use the spindle roughing gouge so it's got to be with the bowl gouge so i'm going to get this rounded off now first of all So I've just took this down with a bowl gouge, um, put a tenon on each end, got it in the jaws, and I'm going to part this bit off of the lid. Now, with this end grain on here, I think it's actually come up absolutely lovely. You can just about feel some tear out on there, but I've only gone over it with a roughly with a bowl gouge, so I think that will stand up and finish off quite nicely. So I'm going to part the lid off now. Right, so that's going to be my lid, and obviously that's the base. Now because I'm rough turning these, uh, I don't need to worry about doing the lid first because um, I can easily work out what dimensions I want to be. So I'm going to try and hollow this out first, hopefully not have to resort to a force in a bit and see how that goes. This has actually hollowed out very, very nicely. Um, used the selection of tools, uh, started off with the spindle gouge, got to end about halfway there, uh, then took a bulk of it out with a round nose scraper, uh, then used a combination of my 9mm Ashley Isles scraper and a skew chisel to try and get the sides nice and level. Now, the, on 40. about 49mm in the bottom there which leaves me from the from the edge here probably about 8 to 9 mil. Um, and obviously I've got the tenon on the bottom as well which is a real small tenon. Uh, the walls on here I'm leaving at that which is just over 8 mil. Um, and that's that finished for now. Now normally when you do the, the base of the box you would cut the lip on the outside edge here um, for your lid to go on but doing it this way it will hopefully allow it to dry a little bit more even this might be a little bit thick um, but having said that I don't really want to take much more off there on the finishing and as always I've always marked where jaw one is so as you can see there that tenon is only probably four mil at the most three four mil and it holds in there nicely so I'm gonna just mark up me jaw one on there chuck up this and then fit rough that off as well so this one should be a fairly quick process i'm just going to face this off and hollow out So that is my finished rough turn tub with side grain. Um, the base is a nice consistent thickness throughout. 
still probably a little bit thick um, but it's not overly wet all through uh, the lid is still quite thick basically because I've done a curved in a bit and I will now leave those to dry just open as they are in the workshop because they're not too too wet um, I mean I'm getting 12% on the side there 12 so in actual fact it's it's not too bad 14% on the bottom there and I think this will actually dry it fairly quickly so I will weigh it and put it to one side and like I say I will leave that for probably maybe three four weeks at least uh, before I come back and finish it off well I've got to say turning that was actually a lot lot easier than I expected when I took the bowl gouge over the sides it really really was hard going um, it wasn't flake cutting as, as well as I expected and but when I actually hollowed the inside out I was really really surprised I basically used the spindle gouge to get about halfway down the inside there and then I used my round nose scraper to, to get down to the bottom and I think I then used my 9mm Ashley Isles box scraper to try and flatten it out and to, I think I used the skew then to, to make sure the, the side walls were nice and straight and the lid very very simple just the spindle gouge quickly hollowed out and a nice quick easy job so that's part two over with um, hopefully it's been of interest to you um, maybe things that you already know uh, and can pass some more information back uh, for things I may not have covered uh, for obviously people who have not done this sort of thing or maybe not even thought about that sort of thing I mean side grain um, as in a, a bowl orientation for your blank on a box I think that is going to come up absolutely wonderful when it's finished and I think it's always worthwhile looking to see what to do uh, I was in actual fact hope was going to try and have a piece of wood rather than have the grain orientation that way I was actually going to look to have it across at 45 degrees so really you had end grain literally wherever you worked so there would have been end grain all the way up the sides there would have been end grain across the top and bottom um, just to really push the boundaries um, but I didn't really have any, any wood to, to do that at the time so if this is your first time here um, I do regular project videos please do subscribe you'll at least get notified every time I upload a video for my existing subscribers I mean I hope you're enjoying this uh, this little mini series and as always it's so much appreciated you keep coming back and watching so thanks again for everybody for watching please do hit the share button hit the like button and leave some comments below so thanks a lot for watching bye